These are the 10 tips you need to know before visiting Las Vegas. Come on. First of all, you should know that early check-in and late checkout is available in Las Vegas, but it is very expensive. Therefore, I highly recommend your arrival and departure times, you know, whether you're flying or driving or whatever it is, coordinating those arrival and departure times to as close as you possibly can to the check-in and check-out times for your hotel. I mean, you of course can pay for early check-in or late check-out depending on availability, but even when it is available it's gonna be like fifty dollars or even higher than that you know like a checkout past 12 p.m or a check-in prior to 3 or 4 p.m it adds up quickly try and only order what you can actually eat at restaurants as you can see here none of these hotels really have any sort of microwave and most of them also don't even have like you know a mini fridge even if you're fine with having like cold food as leftovers a lot of hotels they have fridges but they're mini bar fridges not like personal use fridges my next tip get out of the room i mean come on it's las vegas and the strip is so fun to walk around and unlike most of america you actually can walk around the strip with alcohol you know technically Anything that's like a glass container is illegal. Regardless, you know, like beer cans or plastic cups or just whatever you're walking around with, you'll be perfectly fine. Whatever you brought with you, like tequila or margarita mix, <laughs> I bring that myself. Pour it in a cup. I oftentimes hold on to, you know, like the Fat Tuesday cups and bring it back with me. Another tip that I wanted to mention while I'm just chilling in my room here, you might want to consider getting weekday stays instead of the weekend. Hear me out. It's the Las Vegas Strip. Even on a Monday or Tuesday, there's going to be plenty of people and it's going to be really fun to go pretty much anywhere. Also, while, you know, it is still a lot of fun, you won't have the crazy, insane crowds you'll sometimes experience on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Aside from the crowds themselves, prices, hotels double, triple, even quadruple. So if you're willing to come on a more quiet day of the week, you'll oftentimes save like 50 to even 75%. Like for example, right now, it's a Tuesday. I'm staying Sunday through Wednesday. Obviously I do that because I, you know, make content while I'm here. But yeah, it's still, you know, plenty of fun. I've been chilling by the pool, walking along the strip. That's something to consider for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and another thing about hotels that I'm sure you've heard before, but is also worth mentioning, is that there is so much more to Vegas than just gambling. I personally am not a big gambler. I'll maybe gamble like 10 or 20 bucks once or twice while visiting, but for the most part, I'm here for other things. You know, the dining experience, all of the incredible restaurants and different ethnic cuisines and other, you know, food to experience, drinks of course, <laughs> and then also just attractions and walking around the strip itself. Such an underrated way to enjoy it. It's just walking around it, experiencing it, just enjoying it for yourself. There's a lot of free or inexpensive options beyond the expensive gambling that you can do here. That is, in my opinion, way more fun at the end of the day. Another thing to remember both before you come and while you're here, all of the resorts, including the main ones, you know, Caesars and MGM, but all the others like Venetian, Wynn, have loyalty programs that you can and should join. You can usually get some sort of, you know, promotion. It's usually like free play with slots while you stay and visit and dine at places. Make sure you use your loyalty card and get points at anywhere you go. They'll send you offers. So definitely any casino resort that you visit or stay at, be sure to sign up for their loyalty program. Another thing to consider, especially if you're coming, you know, 
in, I guess you can call it the off season, the winter season, when the pools aren't open, October to March, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm here in July. So it's really hot, like really, really hot. But if you come in like November, December, January, February, and you didn't pack like a sweater or jacket or pants and you want to find something quick and cheap that you can grab there's plenty of options for just grabbing a quick convenient cheap thing for example here at caesar's forum shops they have an h m also at the miracle mile shops at planet hollywood there's a ross a bit further down don't stress too much about packing absolutely everything especially if you're coming during the off winter season. You can always grab something here if you need it. Next up, I know that a lot of you probably come to Vegas, especially if it's, you know, your 21st or, you know, if you're just in your 20s in general and looking to have a good time coming to the clubs like Omnia. Now, hear me out. In my opinion, these clubs are very expensive and overrated. Of course, even if you're a guy, you can get in with like a promoter if you encounter them on the strip and that sort of thing. But even once you're in, then it's just massive crowds of people. Honestly, kind of unpleasant unless you paid for a table. And then you also have to, I mean, if you want to have any drinks, you're going to be spending like 30, even $40. I'm not even joking for like one drink. Not like a big thing, like just a regular drink at a bar. Like it literally costs that much. It's kind of insane. Well, it is insane. Overall, I'd recommend instead trying one of the numerous fun and unique places along the Las Vegas Strip. There's <laughs> a lot of options, plenty of speakeasies. I love the speakeasies on the Strip, especially at the Cosmo. They got Ski Lodge, the ghost donkey is that what it's called anyways you know they got a mexican themed one there's the key lock and key but it's at the horseshoe the proper east food hall at the aria i think it's called the easy really in my opinion way more worth your time and money and a lot more fun another thing to consider try avoid wearing sandals or flip-flops <laughs> you're gonna be really uncomfortable at the very least have some closed toe shoes so that you can be moderately, at the very least, comfortable when taking walks along the strip, which oftentimes the distance between different resorts or attractions or restaurants can be a lot longer than you may think initially. It can take like 30, 40 minutes walking from different parts of it or even longer. So be sure you're not miserable <laughs> walking. One of the things that you want to keep in mind is that the strip is mostly owned by Caesars and MGM. These two corporations own large amounts of the strips and so exude a pretty vast influence on the strip as a whole. Caesars, right here on the center strip, pretty much all of the cheap to mid-priced hotels, and of course, Caesars Palace as well. MGM, most of the south strip, completely dominated by them from Bellagio down. And of course, that has its pluses and minuses. One of the things that may be useful to you is that a lot of these resorts are connected to each other as a result. For example, Cosmo to Aria, they got a bridge, and then between Aria, New York, New York, Park MGM, Excalibur, Mandalay Bay, Luxor, all of those, you know. <laughs> Here at Caesars, less so directly connected, except for Paris and Horseshoe have a bridge between each other. The others, you know, it's pretty easy to walk between all of them are like you know, directly side by side big open entrances so it's very easy to avoid the heat using that and i know a lot of people recommend using like the monorail that goes along mostly behind the caesar's resorts a lot of people recommend using them i personally don't they're really out of the way in my opinion, it takes almost as long just walking to them and waiting for them as actually just walking. So in my opinion, your best bet if you're trying to avoid the heat is to just walk through the cool air-conditioned hotels. Another thing you'll want to keep in mind is that the alcohol laws on the Las Vegas Strip and the city of Las Vegas itself 
are a little bit different. Yes, you know, there is open container laws. The Las Vegas Strip itself is actually not part of the actual city of Las Vegas. Like it's called Paradise, like downtown Las Vegas, Fremont Street, that's the city of Las Vegas. They're a little bit more strict. Basically, you know, like on the Strip, you can walk around with plastic cups that have alcohol, but you cannot use you know, like beer cans, hard seltzer cans, anything you purchase from one of the stores along Fremont Street, technically, I mean, a lot of people do it anyways, but technically you're not allowed to drink it. I think it's kind of dumb. Just keep that in mind. So those are the 10 top tips for visiting Las Vegas. Do you have any advice? Be sure to leave it in the comments below so everyone else can see it. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like and also subscribe if you haven't already. But with that, I'm Ten tips you need to know before moving to love. Not me. <laughs>